You want to feel good about your electric vehicle and government mandates to stop selling gas-powered cars after certain years. It's different in different states. The European Union says that it will no longer sell gas-powered cars by 2035. Uh, you won't feel so good about that decision after watching this. They're here, Sid Siddharth Kara calls like biblical times is how grueling this work is. This is a big part of the research from his new book that was published just in late January. It's called Cobalt Red. Um, I bought it today on Kindle, if you'd like to read it along with me. What he's trying to scream to the world is that a move to electric cars is not more green. In fact, it makes more slave labor, uh, no matter what Kevin Bacon wants you to think. Here's a tweet by Kevin Bacon that the author of this book responded to. Kevin Bacon was just happily telling you that he's partnered with Hyundai to promote electric cars. And the author here is like, great, love you since Footloose, uh, but perhaps you can lend your voice equally to the hum human rights and environmental catastrophe taking place at the other end of those EV supply chains. Um, now, the pieces and components of electric vehicles is something we've spoken about a lot, not to mention that when you plug in cars and you increase power consumption of the grid, it matters what kind of power is in your area. So for instance, um, in China, here's Bjorn Lumberg's research on how China actually switched to electric vehicles and had so many coal powered plants that the electric cars worsened local air with lethal consequences. It's estimated that in Shanghai, pollution from an additional million electric powered cars would kill nearly three times as many people annually as an additional million gas powered cars because they're still coal powered there. Um, and so uh, he talks about the cumulative three effect. Times, three times as many. It's crazy. Wow. Wow. Um, he talks about the cumulative effect of EVs. Um, he says, even if we do it, even if we all have electric cars, he says the impact will be minimal. The International Agency, uh, Energy Agency hopes that we can reach 130 million electric cars by 2030. A breathtaking expectation given that we have spent decades and billions of dollars in subsidies to reach just 5 million. Even if we could do that, it would cut a trifling 0.4% of global emissions by 2030. That's it. And that's only when you calculate energy to energy, meaning um, electricity versus gas power cars. He says electric cars will be a part of our future solution to transport needs, sure, but they're not going to solve climate change. Um, so again, EVs are just not going to save the planet. I don't know how you run the math to think that they will. So can someone please tell that to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau? Um, this tweet just a few hours ago, where he's sort of high-fiving himself because last year he introduced this um, deal with Honda to retool their facilities to make hybrid electric vehicles. Um, he's like, good for us. It's been a year. Glad we did that. That's the whole purpose of the tweet. So looking back after a year and another time. This is what I did last year at this time. Yeah, around this time last year, we announced the first of many deals with automakers, deals that create and secure thousands of jobs, help keep our air clean and support workers as we build on that progress and continue to grow the economy and the middle class. Let's look back. Great. All right. Now, the European Union was set to vote on March 7th in order to put in place this legislation to outlaw gas powered cars by 2035. But the vote was delayed because the EU is worried that Germany and Italy are having cold feet about it. And in fact, that is true. Uh, Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Maloney said this to reporters uh, just in January about the EV transition. She says it's not reasonable. And I think there's a certain alignment by other European countries on our position. She has been expressing concern since the campaign that she does not want to put workers out of work because there's no longevity to their cars. Or say you're a de delivery person and now half of your day is charging a car because you mm. can't go the same, right? She's realizing that this will tank the economy and hurt everyday people. Or when it gets cold and the batteries don't have as much capacity. And when President Biden during the State of the Union address says, I think we'll probably have about another 10 years of gas. We'll still need gas. We'll still need gas for like another 10 years and half and, ha and everyone in the State of the Union laughed at him. Like, yeah. oh yeah, just 10 years. And right. We'll f right. Right. Sure. So what Germany is doing is they've asked the European Union to exempt cars powered by synthetic fuel. 
uh, which is a bit of a head scratcher. So stay with me here. What is a synthetic fuel? Um, here is a summary. It's basically fuels that they have the same property as fossil fuels, but they're produced artificially. So they're not drilled for. Um, they can be used in the same way as fossil fuels and are used all around the world. For example, it's possible to produce synthetic jet fuel, diesel, or gasoline for conventional planes, ships, trucks, and cars. The main difference between fossil and synthetic fuels is how they are produced. Fossil fuels are formed over millions of years underground from organic matter that's turned into coal, natural gas, or oil, and then drilled for or dug up. Synthetic fuels are produced by mimicking these natural processes using renewable resources. Um, and in fact, just last week, the BBC uh, posted, uh, I'll, I'll post it on Twitter, um, uh, published a video of a, a guy in Africa somewhere who uses chicken poop to make synthetic fuels. Did you watch that? Like yeah. he takes all the chicken poop and he stirs it up with water and does something to it and then is able to like power his car and that's like doc brown in back to the future remember yes. he doesn't need plutonium anymore he, he uses now, compost now he uses banana peels and he steals the rest of marty's or uh the beer out of the trash can and he pours the beer into the flux capacitor sure great idea yeah but is that better because we can make it ourselves above ground instead of dig for it below ground you have to ask yourselves now like now we've been through this, right? We should be able to know, are the components green to make? Do we have to do something? Are they energy consumptive? Uh, can we just get those things, right? Well, a Princeton study says that synthetic gas is actually not so much better of an idea. Here's the headline it says, synthetic gas would cut air pollution, but worsen climate damage in China, at least. So this is just a, store, uh, a study of China. Um, and it says, basically, uh, I've highlighted here, the researchers found that switching to synthetic natural gas in industry and electricity production would have little impact on smog-related deaths and cause a major increase in CO2 emissions. That is, like, if it's used in industry. However, switching from coal to synthetic natural gas for residential uses, meaning people who cook on an open flame, um, such as heating and cooking, would substantially reduce deaths due to air pollution and cause less of an increase in CO2 emissions. So using it in your home um, instead of cooking over a coal stove, sure, better. Using it out in the world, no, not better. So why is Germany then asking for this synthetic gas exemption uh, when there is not necessarily proof that that's any better? Are you going to say something, Philip? I heard a noise. No. Uh, but but uh, you, no. Please do. I, I can, though. Okay. <laughs> okay well, no, you have something to it say. It just reminded me. Uh, that I used to work in a, because, uh, you know, I was a journeyman finished carpenter, and I worked in a cabinet shop for about six years, and the owner's son uh, bought a bought an old Volkswagen um, that he converted to a biodiesel. And so in this wood shop full of, like, dust and wood and things like that, he had his biodiesel set up, and it was just like it always seemed to me like the stupidest place to be to be making fuel was in a place that's full of fuel. You know, just yeah. to, anyway, that's uh. <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, if you read Alex Epstein's book, Fossil Future, you realize, you know, we have such an abundant this argument that we have a shortage or that it's bad for us. It's actually, of, of course, the thing that has propelled us to this advanced level that we currently live in. Right. Is fossil fuels and hydrocarbons. This idea that we're running out of it or that we can't manage the pollution from it is just a misnomer. I mean, the idea of scrubbing and making sure that we have scrubbers in different, in, you know, the, the right. way that we burn different fossil fuels, making sure that those protections are in place or the way that we extract certain things. There's so much fear mongering around this. And this idea, of course, that fossil fuels, using fossil fuels cars or diesel generators or anything like this is going to set us back and increase carbon emission zones where we're reaching these two, 3% Celsius increases and Miami is going to be underwater as a result of it. It's all it's all garbage. Well, it matters what energy you've got now in order to make synthetic gas, because to make synthetic gas, you need a lot of electricity. So what electricity are you using to make that gas? If you're China, you may be using a lot of coal. Um, if you're Germany, you're reverting to coal, too, right. because you turned off your nuclear plants. 
if you then are making sync, but you know, there's like a hierarchy that Michael Schellenberger, I think does a great job in his book, Apocalypse Never, of pointing out that nuclear energy is one of the cleanest and most sustainable. You know, so many countries are turning away from it. But if you're using nuclear energy, which is relatively sustainable um, and has no carbon emissions to make then synthetic gas, sure, you're in a better place. Um, but it's going to matter very much that Germany is reverting to coal and then asking to use that power to make synthetic gas. Makes no sense. It, it just, these, I don't know what models they're going out, off of because there's a cycle here, right? You can't just say the end result is clean. Right. You know, it's like sort of greenly made products or whatever. And a lot of times those products have more of a carbon emission because they haven't scaled. Right. Whereas you're making a few of them with a lot of resources and versus a factory making a lot of them, you know, with less carbon input uh, output per item. And so, you know, we have to learn to ask about the components because we keep getting bamboozled with these like ideas of greenness. Well, if you look at the components in cars, you mentioned cobalt just as one of them. There's basically three that are in actual combustion engine cars, three minerals, mm -hmm. right? When you look at EV cars, the list is like 11 minerals. Everything from lithium to manganese to cobalt. Now we need to triple the amount of minerals that we need to pull out of the ground in order to satiate all of the battery components for electric vehicles. Yeah. Like we've literally gone from like Fred Flintstone style cars that need a few minerals, right? <laughs> and, you know, feet, you know, but just a few minerals to now like 11 or 12 different minerals that we need. Which is literally creating a slave economy. Right. Um, I think this author, because I know we have a lot of crossover viewers from Joe Rogan, um, was on a Joe Rogan show. And thank you to those of you who sent that to me. I haven't watched it yet. Um, but he really is trying to pound the pavement to let you know that this is exactly how climate regulation hurts the poorest amongst us. And so, so many of us can be like, well, but I want to upgrade my iPad or I need to get a new electric car, you know, to like drive to the private school. Uh, you know, again, you have to know whose head you're standing on. Are you able to take this, Philip, on my laptop? I don't know if you can or not because I haven't, I can never see this input on the screen. Yeah, give, give me a second. I'll, oh, okay. I'll have to pull it up. Sorry, because um, my my uh, Steam Deck is not working anymore. So what's going on here? I don't know. I don't. Well, I can't ever see the preview whether or not it's even there. So I have to ask mm. you to see it if it's if it's actually logged in or not. But mm. anyway, well, there we go. Let us know what you think of this in the chat. Clayton has a chart. Yeah, no, this is the chart. So this is if you this is the chart I was thinking of. Look at the electric car chart at the top there. The number of minerals that are required. Maybe it's not 12, but it's a lot, right? All those rare earth minerals, right? So you have a whole thing of rare earth minerals. You have zinc, graphite, cobalt, manganese, uh, nickel, lithium, copper. And then look at a conventional car at the bottom. Copper, nickel. Mm. <laughs> like, you know, like, uh, or is that, is that nickel? Yeah, it is. Yeah, nickel. You nickel right. and copper. Like, that's what you need for those comparing minerals and electric and, uh, you know, and, and clean energy cars. So there you go. Just adding on all of this layers of garbage that you need to pull out of the earth. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at Redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to Redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.